Um, I get frequent questions in our office from faculty who deal with uh, credentialing issues uh, tied to their graduate work and how many graduate hours apply toward the courses that they're teaching. <coughs> and what they say is that uh, uh, one year uh, they're fine, and then another uh, another year when they're up for accreditation, uh, there are questions, and uh, that they're worried about the consistency. And they said it's, that in the cases that I hear about, a lot of faculty member who has graduate work that they they argue applies for their teaching, but it doesn't have the right prefix, and someone applying a very narrow definition of what uh, relevant graduate work. Uh, would require but uh, doesn't accept that. Um, okay. What experience do you have with that and what advice would you Okay, so please address Comprehensive Standard 3.7.1 and faculty credentials. First off, let me say for the record that your commission does not have a policy on faculty credentials. There are no mandates. In fact, if you are old enough in this room, and I am, to remember the criteria there used to be mandates. And when we moved from the criteria pre-2002 to the principles, that mandate went away. And so what you will find on our website is guidelines related to faculty credentials. Guidelines means you have flexibility. All of you asked for flexibility. You now have that flexibility. But with that flexibility comes responsibility. The responsibility to make the case that every faculty member is qualified to teach the courses assigned. Now, just going back to the form itself, please use the form. Two, read the directions and fill out the form correctly and completely. But I will use myself as an example. I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, a Master's of Science in Nursing, and a Doctorate in Higher Education Administration. Am I, and 10 years teaching full time and previous to that adjunct faculty, am I qualified to teach nursing? Yes. Am I qualified to teach every nursing course? No. Am I, I'm qualified clearly to teach the intro le uh, level one courses, and I can do med surge one and med surge two, and I learned how to do the maternal health stuff. Don't give me any of your other nursing courses. I can't do peds, besides I'm not really fond of sick kids. I can't do psych. I can't do cardiac and all of those other kinds of nursing content that you teach. My name goes in column one, the courses I'm assigned to go in column two. In column three on that form go my educational credentials, Bachelor of Science Nursing, Master's Doc. Column four is your flexibility column. I call it the Paul Harvey column. Tell me the rest of the story. This is why Marcy's really qualified. The license that is required in your state to practice, and no, I'm not licensed in Texas, but the license, professional development, publications, research, work experience. That's really key for your type of institution. Make that case that the person is qualified that for the assigned courses in column two. I can do that with any discipline. There are some where it's just a duh. You know, you have someone who has a, a no, let them worry about the bachelor degree. Let's say master's degree in sociology and they're teaching five sections of intro one and intro two. That's, that's almost an oh duh. But there's a lot of courses that you need to tell the entire story. So do it in column four. There are certain disciplines where we find ourselves in emerging fields. 
think back to the really old days of computer science. Well, in the really old days of computer science, everybody was homegrown and self-taught. Today, that's not the case. And so you'll see that evolution over time, too. Nanotechnology is an emerging field right now. However, I think in a couple of years from now, it's not going to be that way. Make your case for compliance. If you have any questions, contact your vice president. Follow your policies. I said we have guidelines. But you have institutional policies, many institutions do, related to credentials. Follow your policy. If you make an exception to the policy, document the exception. So here's one of my favorite. I pick on Donald Trump for this one. So is, is the Donald qualified to teach at, a, at your college? Yeah. I, I think we, he, even though he only has a bachelor's degree, he could probably hold his own in some business courses. He might be able to hold his own in some uh, TV stuff. But please don't put him in your cosmetology courses. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the laugh. So make the case. Did that? Can you, can you give some cases that you will actually accept? Because we were told for years that 18 credits, no one can sub unless they get 18 credits in the field. If that's your institution's policy, then you need to follow your policy. That used to be, it's not the commissions any longer. It used to be the mandate pre-2002 when we were working with the criteria. When the criteria went away, so did that mandate. Okay? So here's a, another for example, and I was chief academic officer at Piedmont Virginia Community College in Virginia. And we had a person who taught tennis for us. Name in column one, tennis courses in column two, degrees in column three. It was all about music, folks. She was a very accomplished musician. She was qualified to teach tennis. Everything lived in column four. She was a tennis pro. And so what we did to make our case in this sale is we photocopied her pro card. We photocopied medals and cups and newspaper articles about tournaments that she wrote. We had testimony from the tennis clubs in the area where she taught. And probably a bunch of other stuff that I can't even remember any longer. Sailed through. Very qualified to teach. Give yourself permission to make that case. Can't say every one of them will fly, but I can tell you statistically what starts out as an issue at the offsite frequently resolves itself by the time you get to the board. Yes. My impression is that colleges tend to be scared and they overcorrect by not doing a very good job of defending faculty that probably are qualified if they take, but not obviously so. Mm -hmm. Is that an accurate? I, I think that that's an accurate observation. Um, you're, you're being ultra super sensitive and safe because you want to be found compliant. I, I don't see that that is an unreasonable response, but nonetheless, understand that you have flexibility to make the case and give your per yourself permission to try it Not and to do so. As long as it's reasonable. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, it, who is evaluating this stuff? Look around the room, it's peers. They're wrangling with these decisions every single day at their college. If you can't convince yourself that it's passing the sniff test on Main Street, you're not going to convince a peer. But if you're convinced that it's passing the sniff test on Main Street and you do the documentation to demonstrate it, then you should have a level of comfort that this is probably good to go.